Blessings, blessings, blessings. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatever time it is where you are hearing and seeing me. I thank and praise God once again for another opportunity to join you in the airwaves to share with you teachings on supernatural success. You were destined to be a supernatural success. We are going to continue in our series going into the archives with um, the teachings that I did a few years ago with um, I Am a Kingdom Influencer because as we started this series, it was very important that you understand your importance of influence within whatever sphere you find yourself in. And so we wanted to back up and share these teachings with you to help you better understand your place of influence in this world. I wanted to chat with you a few moments before we bring up that video, um, part seven of I Am a Kingdom Influencer. And I wanted to talk to you briefly about embracing your brilliance embracing your brilliance. God created you to be a very, very unique individual. There are no two of you. I don't care if you are a twin, a triplet, um, a quadruplet. It does not matter. Two, there are no two of you that are identical, the same. You're different. You have different personalities. You have different desires, likes, and dislikes, and what have you. Um, and your, your bent in life is different. It is different because you were uniquely crafted for a specific purpose and destiny. Your destiny, your purpose is found in the Lord. It's not found in uh, what people have spoken over you. I understand that there are prophets that may have spoken into your life and that's fine. That's great. That's wonderful. But there are also people that may have spoken into your life negativity and told you what you would never do, who you would, would never be. Um, They've caused you to doubt the, the uniqueness of yourself. They've caused your self-esteem to be at an all-time low. And that's what I want to address this morning is your uniqueness is your power. The fact that you are so unique in your crafting and in how God orchestrated you into existence, there is so much power in that. And so I want you to embrace that. We are coming to the end of a year. Um, it's been a trying year, I'm sure for many of you. Some of it has been a year of breaking free, like, oh Lord, thank you, we're out of the quarantine or what have you. But whatever your year has yielded to you, we want to end this year in power. We want to end the year strong. We want to end the year better than we began it. I don't care what you've lost during the course of this year. And I really don't mean to sound crass. I know some of you may have lost loved ones, things that were very precious to you, people that were very precious to you. I understand that. And again, I'm not making light of that, but I also understand the power that is vested in you through your creation by God himself for you to overcome even the great losses. How do you do that? You said, I'm, I'm at that place in life where I, I just don't want to go on. You say, mm -mm, no, you will succeed. You will go on. You will be victorious in what God created you to do. The only thing that you need to do is submit and surrender to him. That's all. Allow him to rework that hurt, to rework that doubt, to rework the pain that's within you, to heal you emotionally, spiritually, physically. He is a God of healing. He is a God of regeneration. He can regenerate those places within you that you thought were lost forever. He is that one. And I promise you, he wants to do it for you, in you, and through you in the life of someone else. That's why it's so important for you to overcome. So you can speak healing and wholeness to those that you come in contact with. Vitally, vitally important. So that's why I wanted to really get it into your system and into your psyche, into your spirit about being a kingdom influencer. 
You have a seat at the table. You do. You have a seat of authority. You have a place of influence, not about money, not about popularity. It's about allowing God to work in you so that he can work through you in the lives of those that you come in contact with. That's what it's all about. So as I said, your power is in the fact that you are unique. Your power is in the fact that you have walked through so much in life. Your life experiences give you credibility to speak into the lives of others, to be an encouragement. I look at myself. And when I look back over my life and the things that God has brought me through, the things that people have said against me, I, I, I'm just like, OMG, but God, but God, I wouldn't have made it. But God, I have. And you will too. So please, 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 please embrace that that is within you, that is uniquely you. Your quirks, your idiosyncrasies, whatever. Present all of that to God and allow him to work in you and through you to accomplish that that he created you for. So today we are going to be talking about the components of influence so that you can really understand why you are so vital to the kingdom. This is why we're dealing with kingdom influencers, not just influencers in the societal uh, vernacular, but kingdom influencers because of the uniqueness of who you are, the components that is needed for you to influence those that God will give you as your assignment will align with your uniqueness. It will, it will align, I'm sorry, it will align with what it is that you can sow into these individuals' lives from what you have walked through. I'm, I'm at a place in life right now at 65 years old that I can speak to different levels of, of age and maturity because I am where I am. It was really funny. I, I did some promotional pictures last week. And when I was looking at them and I told my husband, I said, oh, I need to get these retouched because I can see my age in them. And he looked at me and he said, baby, you do remember you're 65 now, right? <laughs> but you still look good. He was a good husband. He was like, but you still look good. But, you know, you have to appreciate what you've walked through, the experiences and embrace that. At 65, I don't look like I looked when I was 20. It's not a bad thing. It just means that I've walked this journey. You've walked your journey. You've experienced things that people need. So with that, I am going to release you to embrace your uniqueness and understand the components of influence so you can understand what it is you have to offer. I want nothing but supernatural success for you. Allow God to put his super on your natural and watch the impact that you have in this earth realm. God bless you. And I love you with the love of Christ. Sit back, relax, enjoy. Well, a gracious good evening to you. We are still in the midst of our series of I Am a Kingdom Influencer, and this is part seven. We have had an incredible time just walking through different things and aspects of influence and learning how to seize our opportunities and seize our days and understanding when influence is basically. Um, tonight, we want to focus on the components of influence because I think that most people, when we're talking about influencing another person's life or a person of influence, we normally focus in on the status of that individual 
financially. But for what we are doing and for our purposes, it has nothing to do with their financial status. It has everything to do with their ability to be used in the importation and impacting of another person's life. So that's what we want to talk about tonight, the components of influence. Think about it. Influence, what it really means to influence is to have an impact on a person's character. We can shift the trajectory of a person's life by how we impact them, how we interact with them. So it really has nothing to do with whether or not you are extremely wealthy or you don't have two nickels to rub together. You still have the ability to be an influence in another person's life. And we start with those that we're in constant contact with right in our own homes and we spread it abroad. I was talking on my other broadcast earlier today about the process. Um, that we go through to reach our potential, our purpose. And in dealing with that, it has everything to do as well with being influential in another person's life. Think about this. If you are walking down the street and you see a homeless person sitting on the side of the road and you walk past them, you don't look at them, you don't acknowledge them, you just keep right past them, what is that saying to that individual sitting there? It's saying that they have no value. It's saying that they weren't even worth you speaking to. And in their mind, they're probably thinking that you are looking down at them, that you are criticizing their appearance, that you were criticizing everything about them even being in existence. Take that same situation and you're walking down the street and you turn to that person and say, hello, with a smile. Hi, how are you today? Just a simple acknowledgement that that individual is there, that they are existing in this sphere of your influence because you are passing by them. So yes, I am saying that every person that you meet on the street, you have the ability to impact their life or to influence them. You can do it to the good or to the bad. So think about it. Again, we're going to take the same homeless person. They're sitting there and they happen to be sitting by a bridge and they're actually sitting there contemplating in their mind, getting up on this bridge and jumping because they just feel like their life has absolutely no value, that they are just literally existing. They're hungry, they're cold, they can't get out of the, out of the elements, they have no place to go. And most of them, you'll be surprised, most of them are highly intelligent individuals that just gave up on life, that just, just checked out for whatever reason. Maybe they lost a loved one, maybe they lost their wealth, maybe they lost their reason for existing, their reason for living. If a lot of people, they can lose a child, they can lose a mate, they can lose um, different things in life, and it will cause them to just check out. Just not to, you know, it's like, I just can't handle life any longer. So that same person is sitting there and you walk by and ignore them, which solidifies their thought that they have no reason for living. Flip that script and you acknowledge that they are a human being, that they are sitting there and the, the courtesy, the smallest little courtesy of just a good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hi, how are you? with a smile to solidify they have value as a human being. That's really what speaking to one another does. It solidifies that, hey, I acknowledge you. I see you. I value you, even though I don't know you. I value your existence in this earth realm. And because I value your existence, I'm going to acknowledge it by just simply speaking. And not only am I going to speak, I'm not going to do it with disdain on my face, like, you know, you shouldn't be in my path, but with a smile, showing forth love. Hi, how are you? People don't acknowledge each other anymore. They pass each other by. And I'm not even talking about the homeless person now. I'm talking about straight up and down. You pass by individuals all the time. And what used to be common courtesy, a simple hello, no longer exists. People do not acknowledge each other any longer. They don't give the common courtesy of speaking. That little, little minute gesture has an influential impact on the life of somebody.
So we're going to look at the components of influence, and I'm praying that as we look at it, it will cause a shift in your mindset and get you to look at being an a kingdom influencer in a different manner. So I asked a couple of people today, when you hear of a person of influence, someone that's influential in another person's life, what is the first thing that comes to mind? And inevitably, everyone answered me in the same way. Money, financial status, how much money they have. That, that literally, that was, that was the answers that I got. And so I was like, wow. And I promise you, I bet if I asked the majority of you on here right now watching me, you would say the same thing. You know, I heard things like Oprah and um, athletes and um, all these different people because of their status financially and because they had a platform. Because of their status financially, they had a platform. So they're instantly, the mindset was, if they are a person of influence, they got to have money. I beg to differ. I beg to differ. Because influence, again, is impacting someone's life and helping them, encouraging them, getting them to, to realize and appreciate the value that they possess in their existence. The fact that you're here on planet Earth gives you value because that means that God had a purpose for you when he created you in his mindset to solve an issue that was happening in this time frame. Okay, you have value. You have value. And it has nothing to do with your financial stability. So for the sake of being a kingdom influencer, here are components of influence, okay? Number one, you, you've got to have a heart for people. You've got to have a heart for people. You will never influence somebody's life to the good. Okay, you can influence it negatively, but you'll never influence a person's life to the good if that person does not realize that you care. Because if they don't realize that you care, then they're not going to receive anything that you are trying to impart to them, even in your family. If all you do as a parent is talk about your child, talk down to your child, tell your child that they're of no use, tell your child, your child you just like so-and-so, you'll never amount to anything. If all you're doing is giving out negative um, descriptions of that person's life, you're not imparting or impacting their life to the good and you're not influencing them to be the very best they can be. You have to have a love of people. That's number one, you know, and it starts again in your own home, but then it spreads abroad on your job. Okay, if you have a supervisory position or maybe you own the company, if your employees do not think that you care about them, then no matter what you are saying to them is not going to have a positive impact on them. You can try to rally the troops and pick up morale and do all of those different things and say just the right things because you've read all the books on leadership. But if you genuinely do not care for your people, they will feel that. They will recognize that and you will not impact their life to the good. So you've got to have a love of people. Number two, you've got to have a desire to make a difference. You have to want to make a difference because if you don't care, if you have that, that whatever, whatever attitude about life and about people, then you're not going to go that extra mile to make a person's life feel meaningful. You know, you may not even feel that your own life has meaning. You got to first care about you. That's first. You've got to understand and recognize the value that you possess. And in recognizing that, then you've got to recognize that that same value that you possess, others around you possess. It is about building the character of someone. It is about increasing their awareness of their strengths and helping them to enhance their weaknesses. It's not about putting them down. It's not about pointing a finger. It's not about passing judgment because we have all fall short. <laughs> we have all fallen short, okay? 
seriously. We all have some, some places in our lives that can be in, impacted to the good, okay? That, that if we had just that person to encourage us, we could look at ourselves differently in the mirror. We could be a better person because of someone's influence in our life. Why wouldn't we want to pay that forward and be that influencer in someone else's life? So you got to love people. You have to have a passion to want to see others improve themselves. Here's another component. You've got to be willing to be used. <laughs> That's a hard one. You've got to be willing to be used. Okay, all usury is not bad. All usury is not bad. I know we get to that place, so I'm not gonna let them use me. That has its purpose, it has its place. And there are times when God will shut a door on something and say, mm, no, no, I'm not gonna allow you to be in that situation. But there are other times where you know, you know that person is just using you but you allow it, depending on what the situation is, you allow it to show forth the love of God because how often do we just use him? How often do we just want what's in his hand? Not what's in his mind, not what's in his heart, just what's in your hand. I just want what's in your hand, okay? We've got to get to that place of, no, uh -uh, I'm not talking to them anymore. I'm not going above and beyond anymore um, because I know, again, they're just using me. Again, time and a place, time and a place. There are times and places where you will say, mm -mm, no, I'm not doing that. And you'll be correct in that. But there are a lot of times when you have to be the bigger person and allow yourself to go the extra mile for that person that you don't believe would go the extra mile for you. And that will have an influence on that person. Here's another example, forgiveness. You've got to be willing to forgive if you are going to be influential in somebody's life. There are times when people will do things to you and the sheer example of forgiveness will turn that person's life around. That sheer ability that we all possess to recognize and understand our own imperfections and not look down on that other person because of their imperfection, because they did something to you, because they hurt you, okay? You can have an influential impact on that person's life. Influence is deep. Influence is very, very deep. When you understand, and I, I wanna just read this definition to you, okay? That it is the capacity to have an effect on the character development or behavior or someone or something or the effect itself. To have that ability to impact, to affect another person's life. Hallelujah. It means more than you could ever imagine. You got to have that ability. You've got to have that desire to say above all, you know, I want to see you succeed. Above all, I want to see you make it. We, we cannot afford to walk around in a vein of envy or jealousy if we are going to be an impact, uh, an influencer, if we're going to have an impact in someone's life. You cannot afford to have that. Okay, why? Because that will stop you from sowing into that person's life. And, and hear me now, to sow in, right, is to give of yourself to that individual, your time, your knowledge, your wisdom, your care, your concern. To give of yourself is having an impact in that person's life. So if you are unwilling and unable to forgive their wrong, to bypass their shortcomings, to look beyond their faults and see their needs as God does for us, then you'll never have the ability to influence and sow into their lives. 
So it's in your, your court. The ball is in your court. If you desire to have an effect on the lives of those around you, you've got to be a, a lover of people, okay? No matter how uh, trying they can be, people can be very trying. They can get on your last nerve, I know, okay? But you still have to have a love of people. You have to want and desire to make a difference in the lives of others. You've got to be available to give yourself away. And you have to be willing to forgive and look beyond people's faults and see their needs. And once you can put all of those little components together and connect those dots, then you can have an influence on all those you come in contact with. Even that person that you only meet one time and you're willing to put a smile on your face and say, hello, how are you? Give value to their very existence. Here's another thing. You have to be a good listener. You have to learn to listen, okay? You can't have the floor all the time. You can't do all the talking. You have to be willing to listen. Why? Because when you're willing to listen, again, you're validating that what that person has to say has merit. You may not even agree with what they're saying, but if you will at least listen, you validate what they're saying has merit because it's their opinion. It's what they feel. You can't help someone through a situation or be an, uh, an influential component in their life if you're not even willing to give credence to their feelings, their thoughts, their opinions. We can agree to disagree, but that does not take away the fact that you wholeheartedly believe what you believe. And I wholeheartedly believe what I believe. But I don't have to hate you for your beliefs. I don't have to put you down for your beliefs. This country is in a turmoil right now because of that very line of division where, oh no, if you don't believe what I believe, then I have to hate you. No, I don't. No, I don't. God gave each and every one of us a freedom of choice. And I will acknowledge and appreciate your freedom to choose what you choose. I don't have to agree with it to acknowledge the fact that you have the right to choose it. And likewise, you don't have to agree with me, but you got to give me the right to have the opinion that I have. Because I have the opinion I have does not mean you have the right to take my life, does not mean that you have the right to put me down, and vice versa. So we've got to learn to validate each other. We've got to learn to understand and recognize that we all, all of us, have value and have merit, okay? And that we are all, we may not all be God's children, but we are all God's creation. And so therefore we have to respect each other as such. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope that you are getting to that place of understanding your value as a influencer in the lives of others. I hope that you can get to that place so that hate can be eradicated. If we can get to that place of validation, of belief that you have value and everyone around, the, around you also has value. If we can get to that place to agree to disagree. Yes, if we can get to that place, then we can get past the hate. We can get past, past the disdain. We can get past that feeling of low self-esteem because I understand I have value. Therefore, I understand you have value and I will not devalue what God has placed a great price on. I won't do it. And anytime I devalue a human being on this planet, that is exactly what I'm doing. So you have to get to that place of understanding the, the wealth, the wealth that each person possesses. So back to the very beginning, a person of influence is not a person that has money. It is a person of great value because that person values the lives of others and pours into each life that they come in contact with, bar nine. 
I pray this has been a blessing to you. I've enjoyed our time together. And Lord willing, we'll meet again next week for part eight of I Am a Kingdom Influencer. God bless you.